welcome to Seven Circles. My name is Jonathan. I'll be your host today. On today's program, we have somebody who's extremely special. I've been waiting for them to come on the show for a while. Uh, with further ado, I introduce Elitam Elamine. Elitam Elamine is a breathitarian. Uh, he's been on a journey for a while, and he's here to share some valuable information with us. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you get a nice cup of water, get something comfortable, and sit back because this is going to be quite the interesting conversation. Um, Elitam, uh, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate you. All right. Thanks for inviting me, and I'm excited to spread this wonderful message. <laughs> <laughs> Great, man. Hey, there's so many things that, that I want to ask you. And, um, you know, I, I told a couple of people that uh, I was going to have you on the show, and they gave me several different questions to ask you as well, too. When we think about uh, breathitarian, it's kind of unheard of. And I know it floated around the internet. And some people, you know, especially in the conscious community, they kind of have an idea of what it is, but uh, we really don't have a good grasp on it. Um, but before we actually get into these questions and things like that, I kind of wanted to know if you could just actually give us a brief history about yourself, um, who you are, and how uh, this journey found you or how you found the journey. All right. The breath and journey, I've actually been on this journey for 20 years. However, when it started, just like anybody who want to make changes on their life, first they have to find out that there's a problem. And one of my problems especially growing up in American culture, where we were taught to eat three meals a day or more, it started to affect my health. Mm. So when this took place, I knew there had to be something done with the health. And just like how you brought up earlier about the different, you know, vegetarian, fruititarian, we got all these different atarians out there now in this age. Now you got this word breathitarian. And that's just a higher degree. And what that is, it comes from the ancient word anedia, which is the ancient word for fasting. And that means to eat very little or none at all. Now, when we explain this message, it's actually a holistic lifestyle. And a holistic lifestyle in its fullness is a mind-body connection. The mind and the body are one. So when I came into this lifestyle, and started making diet changes, going more lighter, I started to see changes not only take place on my physical body, but it also started to change the way my perception, the way I thought about things. But then last but not least, my physical life, the mirror reflection started to change. It's hard for people to put that together at first, but everything we do, think, and the society we're in is reflecting how our life is going to be dictated. Because there is a thing called sociology. That is the study of the society you live in. Nobody really has an original thought. Every way you think, the music you like, the friends you are around, the, the language you speak, that dictates where you were born. Even your belief system about your relationship to yourself and the cosmos, God, or whatever. It's all been handed to you. Now that's one aspect, and that's not talking negative. The positive thing is for me to grab the breath theory and message, I didn't pull it out of nowhere. It's already in the fabric of society. Now listen at that, because every religion is talking about a transformation. All religions hold something about fasting and backing away from the table, and it's related to divinity, getting close to God getting close to the higher forces. So when you start really taking it seriously and purging yourself out for number one, learning the importance of it, it will make the body healthier and you do start feeling your relationship, getting more sensitive to the energies around you. Now this makes it good because there's an evolution in society all around the planet where humanity is looking at their importance to nature. We got global warming. We understand there's a behavioral thing taking place. In your first world countries, there's a thing dealing with preventable diseases. That means it did not have to happen. High blood pressure, liver ailments, strokes, cancer, diabetes. Those are due to lifestyles, which is a thought process that came out of the fabric of society. That's affecting everybody. 
So now we've got this revolution. This is why we've got the most diet changes ever around to battle against that. We got the most information now about fasting. You could Google it, it's all on YouTube, about the medical benefits of not eating. Now listen at that now. Right. So when you deal with the breatharian message, it's right in alignment with everything that we're talking about because it's already in society. But the foundation to master this is learning about the power of meditation and energy cultivation. Any physicist on this planet could tell you that you are an energy being. We could use that word, light being, whatever you want to call it. You see energy, you hear energy, you're working with physics and everything you do, the position of your bones, your structure. So when you get deeper into physics of the holistic lifestyle to better your health, you are grabbing everything. It's more than just diet. It's more than just fasting. Your thought process, your perception is number one, and it means a lot on how you live in your life. We learned these things about vitamins, minerals, but in reality, the social structure gave you that. You really don't know what it is. The average person is just eating. You're not sitting there saying, well, I need this amount of vitamins a day. You're not the average person. You understand? Well, and, yeah, I was actually going to ask you about that because um, so I used to be a chef and I was in the restaurant industry for uh, 27 years. I went to three culinary schools. And uh, recently I dropped out, if you could say that, and I opened my own company and I'm an entrepreneur. But, uh, you know, something that we learned in the whole culinary world is about proteins and, you know, um, uh, calories and fats. And like you said, vitamins and minerals and all that kind of stuff. So what you're saying is that that is something that was just given to us. We really don't know anything about it and that everything that that the body requires to keep itself in um, a healthy, self-existing state, you can get it all just through uh, breathing in a conscious type of way. Absolutely, because look at this. When we were embryos being born, the first system of the body that was being formulated was our central nervous system. Your central nervous system is your brain and your spinal cord. The brain was first and the spinal cord is an extension of the brain. Right. And this is activated by energy. Energy is our foundation. So that's why they've been telling us about through different cultures of a chakra system, an energy system, the nadis. But now due to where we are in our education of humanity, your central nervous system use uh, neurons which are basically energetic impulses that's going all around the body, giving us signals to move, to see, to interpret the world around us. Our thoughts can even be measured, just like a radio wave. See, this isn't far-fetched now. And we got an electromagnetic field to come off of our bodies, what spirituality used to call an aura. So now more than ever, we got a great revolution that's taking place where you got a lot of speakers over the last couple of decades who's been connecting the sciences with religion, bringing it together, bridging that gap. So when you deal with the breath theory and knowledge, it's right in alignment with everything. I've just happened to be manifesting and living it. I worked on my central nervous system, just like wiring a house, bringing the electricity through the house, and you can make it stronger. You can upgrade it. The more you meditate, the more you relax the body, the stronger the energy, the electrons that's in the atmosphere by its nature start automatically running through the body. That's what we sleep for. You understand? We brought it so much down to earth and I teach this message so much. I'm wondering when a person cannot get it. And so, usually so, people do. So, so I, I, I practice something and not as much as I should, but I practice something called the micro um, cosmic orbit. And, and that's basically where you have your energies that are in your, um, your sex regions and you pull them up through your perineum you can actually feel the energy moving up through the cord going to your brain. And then it actually, um, I guess it excites the brain, but it actually makes the brain feel really, really good. And then you relax and you let the energy just fall back down. And it, it rests about two inches below your navel, which is called, called the dot TN. And you can store your energy there. And that's just one technique that, that I, I learned. But it's, you know, you were talking about when you're an embryo and, you know, you have the spinal cord, right? I have the spinal cord, the umbilical cord. And the cord is something where energy is supposed to move through. So like, like the baby's being fed from the placenta, 
uh, you know, through the cord to the baby. And it's like, we have these cords, these spinal cords, but a lot of times, I guess we really don't know what, what they are for. We don't really know how to use our body properly. Cause like what you said, we just take things that are in society and we kind of go with the normal trend and, and, and things like that. So, so what, 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 like, please explain a little bit more about the spinal cord and about moving energy through it. Cause I, I know in one of your videos, you actually talked about the microcosmic uh, orbit. Oh yeah, the microcosmic orbit, that is really my bread and butter. Now, when I teach this message, one thing I'm glad what you just said, you experienced it already. So it's a difference talking from a practitioner who experienced their own energy compared to somebody who never did. There's gonna be two different reactions. Because a person who no, never really experienced the energy within them, of course, this blows their mind at first. <laughs> so that's why when I do the retreats and stuff, the first goal I do is at least do meditations where everybody can start feeling their own energy. And that's where the excitement comes. Now, phase number two is, I like how you said, you don't practice this as much as you should. And everybody go through that phase. You know, we got different things in life and stuff like that. But when you start dealing with the uh, breatharian journey, this is the bread and butter, you know, some form of meditation, because just like if you're working out in the gym and you start building muscles, through repetition, that's the only way it's gonna happen. You understand? It's the same way with building an energy body. This is what we're talking about. You gotta stay consistent and a person could grow on that. Now dealing with that spinal cord, that is the bread and butter of health. All your ancient religions and cultures around the planet, they had this symbology dealing with the staff with the serpents coming up and up it. Right. But to me, that's a schematic basically saying energy love to rise upwards. Yoga, you got things like Tai Chi, the Kung Fu practices, they all tell you that most of your energy of the body is located in the hip area and you want that energy to come upwards. Now, another key point that you made was when you were doing that practice, how the brain felt as it was coming up the spinal cord. Now that's very key because the brain is the organ in the body that uses the most energy, hands down. So the reason why we eat in the first place and it's so easy to be overweight is because we're looking for energy. That's our nature. It's just that food, the dense food is at the most dense level, you understand. And that's all we've been taught. But there's so many other energies that actually got the human being moving, got them living, and they just don't realize that it is being coming to them at a low level. So you want to, the reason why you want to meditate and start dealing with that energy of that spinal cord, opening up those energy channels, is already flowing up and down. You got the fluid and everything else to where you're making your decisions to move your hands, your arms. There's a whole network going on. But you want to open up that channel, you know, just like this is a bio machine, just like any type of machinery. You want to clear out the clutter, clear out the toxins that's messing with the electrical circuits, that's messing with the fluids in the body, get the blood fluid going. This is the foundation of health. Your hemoglobin, when it's going around the body more smoothly, it draws energy from the atmosphere to it. That's a scientific fact. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is backing it up more, but it's about a person living it, coming into their own realization. Now, your measurement is gonna be your health. Like for me to talk this message, I'm in the best health, best energy I ever been in in my life when I'm 51 years old and I'm rolling. You look and great. And I'm gonna tell you, right. I feel great. Look, somebody just walked past a woman and said, you got a nice body. I just experienced that. <laughs> I'm rolling. <laughs> and I know it's all about the food. Yes, it is. Mm. Now, I'm not saying the human being ain't supposed to eat at all. I don't want you to be scared like that. But what's happening is humanity is abusing that energy. See, even when I'm teaching you, I'm teaching a person how to eat again before they go into food freedom. First of all, you need some discipline. You just can't abuse yourself like that and expect yourself to live a happy, healthy life. We're so connected with nature because you are nature. There's a relationship going on. You were born into this relationship. Now, let's bring it down to earth. Just Imagine you're in this relationship with this other person and a relationship does take some type of responsibility, does take some type of respect. 
But if you're in this relationship and you're immature, you could cause a big headache in that relationship because you're immature, not taking it seriously, disrespecting the other person. And that's what people are doing with their relationship to nature, relationship to the cosmos. They're immature. That's what we mean by spiritual immaturity, a spiritual baby. And, that, and the word spiritual, let's bring it down to earth again so we won't think it's religious. It just means an energy relationship. We're energy beings now. Just be, by you breathing, it's more than just oxygen you need. You are breathing the energy that's in the air. Absolutely. We got so many different forms of breath work out there. Even if you was to start practicing that, you'll say, I got more energy. Where did that come from? So you know it's something more that's going on than just oxygen. Of course, we got these other gases, and that's just what they are. We're living in the bottom of gases. They're going through you. They're all around you. We're already practicing uh, photosynthesis. Now, we'll say it to plants, and the only thing we say that we just get vitamin D from the sun, which is photosynthesis, but we get a lot more from that. When you're on this breath theory journey, hands down, this is the hottest message on the planet right now. When you really take it seriously, get the right tools, work with yourself, monitor yourself, and really start controlling your thought process, getting rid of that negative voice, the way you're looking at the world, because nobody's really chasing you. <laughs> right, and it changes your reality. And when it becomes your own personal realization, then it don't matter what I say, you got the tools now, and your life will perpetrate and penetrate everybody else around you. Because not only you got your own electromagnetic field, you share other people's electromagnetic field. Everybody that's in your life, y'all affecting one another. Right. So when you start affect, uh, doing your electromagnetic field and taking responsibility for it, there's a thing called everything vibrates. Vibrations affect each other. So when you start raising your vibration, you will affect everybody around you positively. You understand? So that's why the best teacher really isn't how you interpret it and say it. It's actually through a lifestyle about you living it. You'll affect everybody around you. And that's what's happening right now. That's why the breath theory message is growing so big. More people are doing it. And, and, and I think it's really needed around this time. You know, we talk about the coronavirus and everybody's conscious of it and how that's supposed to be like um, an attack on the air. So everybody has to face mask on. And, it's, and you know, right. and then also the I can't breathe um, meshes. And it's like, yeah, it's definitely needed right now. I heard a couple of people yesterday on a different YouTube channel, they were talking about food shortages and things like that you know we don't really don't need to eat and it would definitely be a nice tool to have or like what you said just learning how to eat because we do overeat um i i, I really want to i really want to dig deep and i'm just so excited i have so many questions um that is really not structured the way that i wanted it to but b b before i actually ask you a couple more questions when i was practicing the um microcosmic orbit and i was doing it a lot um, like religiously, and this was three or three years ago. And uh, my routine would be, I would wake up, I would go downstairs and I couldn't find anybody to answer these questions. So I'm happy that I have you here. Maybe you can ask them for me. So I would wake up in the morning, go downstairs, I would lie in the sun to get that nice sun when it, when it doesn't have a lot of, um, um, what do you call it? Um, ultraviolet. Um, and then I would practice the uh, breathing t technique and after I was doing this for about a period of a month every day, what happened was after I started moving it up to my, uh, um, my, my brain, after a while, I felt a bulge right between my eyes and it got really big and then it would actually start to pulsate. So it would go in and out, in and out, in and out. And then all day I would constantly be rubbing my, um, between my eyes, with my third eye like this, like this. And I didn't know if I was causing some type of, um, I uh, forget what they call it, but some type of um, illness. And if that was like not natural, so I just stopped because I kind of got scared. Is, is that something that you would experience when, when you were actually doing that often? Or perhaps I was doing it wrong. Maybe I was leaving the energy there and not moving it all the way through. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. Just like anything, and I'm glad some people run into stuff and they don't know what it is, so they'll get scared. Now, in your head where your pineal gland is, like when we're going back to where we were embryos and that brain was being born, right. everybody has what they call, it's called the um, substantia nigra. 
means the black substance. This is a medical term. It's in everybody's brain. It's this black part that's in the brain. And what that is, that's neural melanin. And melanin, that's what gives us our skin color, our eye color. It deals with energy. It's in relationship to the sun. So we being energy beings, and the reason why it's in the brain like that, that should tell us something right there. The brain needs energy. That's why it uses the most energy in the body. So it's already got this melanin that's in there that's used to harvest and use this energy so the rest of the body, so it can deliver it to the rest of the organism. So it starts out in the brain again, because that's the one that calls the shots. Okay, here we go. So by you doing that microcosmic orbit again, like they say in yoga, there's secrets within the body. But let's break it down to earth. When you're on a breath during a journey, you are actually tapping the resources of energy, the energy reserves in the body, so these energies can flow more freely. Because you do have an electrical circuitry in the body. You understand? Yes. So you're tapping into these energy sources. Now, the average person who's eating every day don't know, smoking, got a certain lifestyle. Uh, they don't know these energy reserves. They're there but they're not out there higher quality. Some, of them, some people is dormant. So that's why when you're opening it up, you feel these different influxes in the body. Now, when we just talk about the brain uses the most energy, if the brain don't get its energy, that's what it makes the rest of the body uncomfortable. That's why people can't understand going without food yet, because yes, if you try to put tape on your mouth, you're not gonna make it. You understand? We're not saying put tape on your mouth. You got work to do. Uh, energetic work. Yeah, <laughs> I worked. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they say for no lazy person. And you also got to go get educated on what you're doing. Right. Absolutely. It ain't far-fetched education, but you got to get in this. You got to learn educational-wise what to do, the do's and don'ts, the myths, all this other stuff. Then the next education is you practicing it. Perfect practice made perfect. So I like you say you at least gave yourself a month before you, but you did fill those energy centers. Right. Now what happens sometime dealing with these practices, so much energy be in the head, and you can make you feel uncomfortable. So there is techniques where you can actually, because your brain is powerful, where you can start commanding that energy, because wherever the brain, the mind goes, the energy goes in the body. Right. So that's one thing about the microcosmic orbit. You can start taking your brain, focusing on other energy channels to get that energy down and start circulating around the torso and, the, and around the spinal cord to keep it evenly. That's why we got this thing called balance and harmony. Everybody got enough energy. It's just distributed in places in the body where it's not harmonized. So, so we so, feel it as pain. Oh, go ahead. No, so, so what you're saying is once I felt that pulsating, all I basically had to do was, um, you know, put my attention on a different part of my body and that energy would have, have easily balanced uh, or equalized itself out. Absolutely. So you won't be scared of it. So that was a good sign that you felt that influx at the top of the head. Right. Again, when we see those ancient pictures with an angel with a halo and stuff, right. let's make it plain. That was energy in the brain. That was a person who understood to get the energy from the body and the brain. That's what makes you a saint. That means you are in tune. You are in alignment with universal laws. And the byproduct is good health. And the byproduct is for you to even get a halo, you are regulating what goes into your body or what don't goes into your body. So, that, so if the brain got its energy like that, you don't need to eat. Okay. Because the brain, that's why you eat in the first place. It's all for energy. Right. Now, the average person don't say, I live to eat and all of this stuff. They're just addicted, you understand. And that's understandable, too, because we do got chemicals coming off in the body, reward centers, like dopamine, oxytocin, tocin. That's why sugar is so addictive. Right. Salts are so addictive. Yeah, people are addicted to that. And even when you start weeding yourself off of that, you can start seeing physical changes on the body. You understand? Yeah. So this is, uh, could be quite trying in the beginning, especially when you're in a society where food is everywhere. And they like our ancestors. We got restaurants everywhere, commercials, family get togethers, refrigerators. I mean, this is big time. You understand when you're coming out of that. All right, so, so let's, say, let's say that I'm the 
average uh, person. I, I happened to click on this YouTube channel, uh, Seven Circles. Wow, it's amazing. And I see this guy talking about uh, being a breatharian and not eating. And every day I'm doing a regular American diet. I'm consuming, you know, three meals a day, maybe some snacks in between, whatever. So something is calling me at the inside and saying, you know what? There's something to this that I actually want to try it. But what, what, what are some uh, beginner steps, some things that people could do to actually start moving in that direction? What would you recommend? All right. I got a four plan, base plan here, if not more. First of all, you should start at least fasting. I tell people once a week, start learning how to fast. Don't overdo it. You understand? If you never fasted before, but pick one day and try to keep it the same day. So and this is good health wise. It's just like if you had a factory or a machine running at 24 seven and people got to look at their bodies. If you're eating every day, you are using a machine constantly with no breaks, no maintenance. So just like anything, if you use it too much with no maintenance, don't clean it up. You want to get more use out of the body. So we even got intermittent fasting that's blazing all around the uh, planet now. And like I said, we got the most medical benefits on fasting now than ever before. So you can educate yourself on that and take at least one day for yourself. And depending on where you at, uh, you don't have to do dry fasting. You can do water fasting, do a juice day. That will really benefit the body. Now, first starting out, it will be trying if you never did it before, irritable and all this other stuff. So try to pick a day where you don't have a big schedule. You don't have to go see the in-laws. You ain't got a busy day at work. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but over a period of time where creatures are habits, you'll get used to that new habit and the body will start conforming to that new lifestyle. So that will really benefit you, number one. Number two, since we said meditation to foundation, a lot of people, that's a loose word, but we got uh, so many meditations on YouTube, on the internet now, so many groups popping up all over the place. At least try to learn what it's about. Cooling down those thoughts, observing the thoughts, observing the breath, any method you take. We got different forms of chanting, different forms of visualization. At least getting used to getting to that new habit until you grow into it a little more, you understand? And be consistent with it the best you can. Number two. Number three, take a look at your window of consumption on how you're eating. You understand? If you're doing a three meals a day, and believe me, it's gonna catch up with you. Nobody gets away. You might wanna uh, skip a breakfast or cool down on a lunch. Or if you're eating too many heavy foods, start eating more fruits and vegetables because there is knowledge in food. Some foods are more energetic than others. Some foods digest better than others. So you really gotta start taking your health more seriously on how your window of consumption is. So take a look at your food consumption. Right, this goes for everybody. Right. So that's three on this journey. And then number four, as you're meditating, you wanna start really taking a look at how you are thinking. Everybody does have a negative voice inside of them. Now, this negative voice isn't evil. It's just that we had an ancestor once upon a time who, if they seen a rock and seen a shadow coming behind it, their mind probably was saying there's a lion behind there, all right? <laughs> now, even though they could be wrong, it, was, it, it came in handy if you was right. That's why we're here right now. Somebody uh, survived due to a negative thought process by over highlighting things to stay out of that area, that area. But right now, the average person, when the last time you saw a lion, you know what I mean? Right, right. It's not like you're living in that type of society, but our genetics of that voice is still there dealing with everybody. Especially in this age we are now, 2020, they had a thing back in um, 1999 that they predicted at this time, there'd be the most depression as ever before. You understand? This is even before the coronavirus hit. So you got people that's really these negative thoughts are overwhelming them. They don't know what to do. So coming into meditation, observing your thoughts will really help with the breatharian journey, which is needed because the universe is user friendly and it is here to help you. You understand? Yeah. Oh man, these energies are here to help you. But if you don't come into that other uh 
your true nature that is positiveness, that over that other thought can overwhelm you. So the foundation again, you want to fast, right. you want to meditate, you want to deal with that thought process, and you should exercise. Now that don't mean you need to go get a membership to the gym, but you should start moving that body because energy loves to move. There is a thing called a couch potato. <laughs> and I even right. And I even used to game once upon a time, me and my son, and we gained weight gaming every day. You spend a lot of time there on the computer. It right. can happen easily. And you're doing yourself a good injustice. So get up off that couch, stop watching Netflix, get you a time to get that <laughs> energy moving. Because this is all about energy again. You'll feel a lot more better about yourself. You got a lot more energy flow. So if you combine these things together, start seeing these improvements, this will get you prepared for the next level. So, so, so I, I you know, I, I really like your story and, the, and your lifestyle and the way you're living because you're the perfect example. Here you are, you're from Ohio. You served time in the military. I think it was the Navy, if I recall um, accurately. Um, yes. You, you, you have a son, you were married before, you know, um, you know, I have a pretty good memory. I don't miss much. And, and here you are doing these amazing things and you haven't eaten or you ha you've been on this journey for about 20 years. So, right. so what are some of the, the things that people will start to see change um, inside of their, their physical, mental, and emotional um, um, body? Oh, man, this is so good. Now, the first obvious change, especially if you are changing your diet and going lighter and you, you're growing more conscious, you are, will see a physical change of weight. Now, we do got a thing in the West and around the world dealing with obesity. That is a big one. So this will really do you some good. You, I got a friend now that's here, and even though she's, she's on the breath during journey because it fits everybody, right. but she's glad that she lost the weight she did. You know, and her family notices, everybody giving her good compliments. And <laughs> right, so right there, that should be a plus. Now, if you're a person that's already thin because everybody have different metabolisms, this at least give you a chance with the other things of exercise, you know, to start strengthening the body, start giving more energy. You got the diet part already, but start meditating. So this gives you time to start working on other things. Have you, you ever understand? Seen, yeah. Have you ever seen a case where somebody actually gained weight instead of lost weight? Like if they were really uh, fatigued, that they actually gained a little more muscle or I don't know, fat perhaps? Well, right now I just gained, what, three pounds and that's all for muscle. Because wow. I've been doing more push-ups, more pull-up bars, and muscle holds weight. And muscle also stores energy. So even though the brain uses the most energy in the body, hands down, and that's what you should be focusing on, giving that brain its energy so you can function better, um, the brain does not store energy. So that's why you got to learn these meditations like the microcosmic orbit, your energy centers, uh, strengthening the body, so it can have places to store the energy. That's why people get fat in the first place, that stored energy. So your body does store it, but you want it to store it properly in the right places. You want it to look good. You understand? Yes. So gaining weight wise and plus your perception, the way you see yourself means a lot. So even when a person is working out, an athlete will tell you to see yourself, look at the muscle, concentrate on it so it can grow faster. See yourself as you're walking. See yourself how you look. That means a lot on how the organism is grabbing these energies and seeing itself. Because one thing about your body, which is your subconscious mind, it don't know truth from reality. Right. Listen at that now. You can even think about yourself doing a full workout routine, sitting down in a chair, and your heart rate will go up and different hormones will start going off into your body. So you can affect your body just at that type of level. And there's much scientific proof. You can even picture yourself playing a piano, learning piano just by thinking about it. And your body is picking up the neural pathways and your brain start changing. Yeah, right, Now right. That's, how, that's how powerful thought is. But when you put the action mixed with it, whoa, watch out. That's what the breath there and journey is, is all about. So I started to do meditations while I started to command my body to get everything it needs from other sources as I'm taking it on this journey. I start seeing the energies coming in from different places. You understand? 
because there is energy coming from the earth. That's even can be measured now, you know, 432 and all of these other frequencies. We got cosmic energy that's constantly hitting the uh, earth both day and night. So even when you start relaxing and meditating, you can feel that influx because our body is, is good conductors of energy. Everybody's are. You understand? That's why this is for everybody, but you need the right information. It got to stay consistent to start watching yourself grow. Oh man, this is good. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, when, when, um, so like last week or actually two weeks ago, I went on a fast for seven days and um, I actually recorded a little bit of it on my YouTube channel. And <clears throat> what I realized is like, when you take from the earth, you take water, she wants it back. You have to give it back to her, right? When you eat something, you're going to have to give it back to her. And, um, doing this seven day fast, um, you know, I, mentally I was somewhere differently and I didn't have all of the things tying me down. I didn't have my digestive system bothering me. I didn't have, you know, my, uh, um, hormones, um, bothering me and, and things like that. But then the minute I broke the fast and I began to eat again, all of a sudden I felt like I was, I guess you could say kind of held, held captive to the, the energies of the earth. You know, you've been doing this for such a long time now. I'm just curious, like, like taking in a lot of cosmic energies and, and, and not really being taken in a lot of these heavy foods. What, how do you actually perceive, perceive um, life now? Like, what, like oh, do, you have, do you have a better relationship with animals? Are you, are you able to take in more and more on sun? Do you need less sleep? Um, what about your dream state? What about like, um, uh, let's just be real. Like, what about like sex and, and, and things like that? Like what goes on in your um, anatomy and in, in your mind? Oh, uh, there's a whole dramatic lifestyle change. Somebody just asked me a couple of days ago about what are the hardest things about the Breatharian journey? And one of them was getting used to the new lifestyle change. That's why it takes time. The way you're living right now is going to completely change when food is cut out. Because we spend a lot of energy thinking about it, going, getting it, preparing it, getting the money to go get it. So when you start detaching from that, that's a whole nother ball game. But you have to get used to that new lifestyle, even though it might sound favorable in the mind. You got to get used to actually living it day by day. So all the religions also talking about it, even spirituality detaching. So you are becoming detached from a habit that was bogging you down to the earth. And I said in uh, some videos that you are actually making a transition from an earth animal. That means that you was getting all, everything you needed from the earth to keep you alive that you thought. And you are actually transferring to an air animal. You are now bringing in cosmic energy, cosmic forces where you're not detached or influenced by those other forces anymore. Because it's just like when a piece of cake is uh, calling you, your favorite piece of cake. Now, if you never tasted something before, it won't call you. Right. But if you tasted something before, that means you have a relationship with it. It's like an invisible chain. So when you break that chain, and it takes time, we call that craving. You won't crave it no more, so it's not calling you. So it frees you up to do other things. Now, what it does for me, it gave me more time. And when I said this is a health message, another indication you know you're getting better health, that means, because it's all about brain health. That means that if the brain is getting its energy, you will sleep less. That'll be a, another attribute that will come up. So you'll do like two to four hours of sleep, if, if not. And um, even in Russia, they got great uh, tests dealing with sleep. And they'll straight up say the less a person sleeps, the longer they live. Now I ain't talking about having trouble sleeping. I'm talking about where you're healthy coming into this mode. You understand? So you got more energy. So you'll sleep less, you have more time on your hands. So that will give you the opportunity. Another reason why people eat is because of boredom and emotions. So if you don't know what to do with yourself all that time, you're gonna be eating because you don't know what to do with yourself. So that's why I picked up all types of new hobbies. I know how to sew. I know how to write music. I know how to play different instruments. I know how to play with different languages. Cause you got all that time on your hand, read book series, all of this study, you did, so did. much you could do. 
that was a, that, that was actually my question. Like, what did you do with all this extra time? Because what I realized is that I saved a tremendous amount of money. I was like, wow, I'm spending oh. like 20 $30 every day on food. And then, like what you said, the time to prepare it, the time to go and get it, et cetera. It's a lot of energy. So you have a, you know, a great amount of time to free up. A, a deal with money, yes. You'll save a lot of money, but then it's where, where it gets good. You don't have to go chase a lot of money because your life don't require that much upkeep of finances anymore. Like you said, $20, $30 a day eating. Minimum of 10. I mean, really, that's a lot of money adding up day after day, week after week, especially if you're providing for a family and all this other stuff. You're in the hundreds without a shadow of a doubt. Right. One person alone in America spends at least $200 a month just to eat. Mm. Do, so do right you, there, to, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just wanted to know if you still actually got cravings. Do, do you still get them? Um, if you see something? The cravings, the cravings cease yeah. because your desire goes down. When you start seeing a benefit of more energy flow going in the body, it's a filling state. You start asking yourself, I don't want to feel like that right now. Because just like how you said you were feeling one way where you were fasting, do you start eating again? You seen that difference. Right. You will start seeing that difference in your life more and more. So of course you'll go through a cycle coming in and out. That's just being normal. Because you were used also to that old habit, old taste of foods. But over a period of time when you stay with the practices and you start feeling that big influx on how you feel and you have to come out of it again, your body will come out of it. A new love start overriding. So you start wanting to be with the cosmic forces or being in the light more than being with the denser uh, forces. So craving don't mean nothing. It's about your life and your health and your happiness now. So it overrides it. Oh, man. Wow. Um, yeah, so so um, as far as like sun gazing, do you actually sun gaze or do you just take in the energy through the uh, uh, air, through the water. I think you call it the mommy, mommy waters, mommy waters, am I right? Oh yeah, when I did the one video. Yeah. Now your body by its nature already deals with the sun and the atmosphere. Sun gazing, the reason why we got that term, somebody just was trying to make people aware of the benefits of the sun and how you can use it spiritually or energetically. So that, of course they had to put it into a curriculum, a package. Yeah. So we got this term called sun gazing. So I don't come out here and look at the sun and do all this, I don't need to. I'm out here on the beach right now, you can see, and my body's already dealing with the sun. You understand, I'm already relaxed. Right, and you already would do that. You're in um, India right now, right? Oh, uh, yes. And, 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 and I know a lot of what we see on the news is not the whole story. So I just kind of wanted to ask a couple of questions. Like, what is it like with the face mask uh, situation? Do you guys have to wear them when you go to public places? Uh, how's that? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's all around the world. Yeah. Everybody's dealing with it. It's all around the world. So in public places, they do get that policy. Um, you got a lot of villages and communities here who know each other more. So if they haven't been affected, they just don't let nobody in new. You yeah. know, so of course, they're looking out for themselves. So that policy is everywhere. But of course, you'll go to places like I'm at now. I'm all alone out here on the beach and people is kind of separate. You're, it's more lax more linear depending on where you at so right now that is taking place all over the planet right now but some places are more strenuous than others let's put it like that of course if you're closer to nature out in the trees it ain't like nobody's monitoring you and it's not like you're in a public place and you know what i mean right right but, but, you know, when, when uh, like every, every guest that I've actually interviewed so far, when they uh, come on the show, I ask them about racism and how do we and how do we end that? And um, uh, you've been around for a while. I'm sure you've seen a, a lot of things as I have as well, too. And with 2020, uh, that's definitely was a big issue that came up. Do you, do you think that once you adapt this type of lifestyle, that it automatically goes away? This is a conversation that I was having with my sister uh, earlier today. And I was like, you know what? I was like, I don't. I said, first of all, I think that r racism is just pretty much like a thought and nobody's really a racist. It's just that they have these thoughts of division. It's like to prejudge something. But I was like, I think maybe it all stems from actually uh, killing and eating a lot of animals. 
And I used to eat animals back in the past. So I'm not judging anybody, but that was just a thought that I had. But do you think that like once you actually change your lifestyle to this breathitarian lifestyle, that things like that kind of really don't have any meaning and they kind of just dissolve like salt in, in the water? Well, every little change I help because for the most part, the racism you see on a planet that's negative, that is a thought process that's taught and learned. That is taught and learned. Because you get a group of children all together of different races and stuff like that. Um, you, they don't have to be taught that way. You understand? Right. It's just all about cooperation. That always wins out. Now, when you come with the breatharian thought process, you are coming into a unified thought process. In order to be nourished, you have to think like that. Especially I'm traveling all around the world. Everywhere I go, I magnetize good people to me. It don't matter what color you are. Because right. that is me. But that's a thought process again. Now to show you how strong a thought process is, there was a brother that I met here in India from the States. Okay. All right, just like I'm from the States. And we meet each other, hey man, what's up? Right. But his perception as we over here in India, he has a perception on what he was taught. These people are, um, I don't think they like black people. They're this, they're that. That's how he's thinking. Right. That's already on there. Now I'm looking at it, where you get that from? That's my thought process. Right. So as we go out together, he see how all these people smiling at us, waving at us. And I have to start educating them. See, you were already thinking like that. That's why you didn't see that reality. Mm. You see where I'm getting at? We are being, <laughs> our thoughts, the way we look at our things is changing our, the, our perception of the way we looking at life and how it's drawing things to us hands down. But when you break that barrier and learn how to start coming into it, and for some people it's easier than others, that's what you start seeing. That's what you start experiencing. It's sort of like a song. If you listen to a certain song right now, it changes the way you're looking at the world. Like you look at a motivational song, you start looking at everything. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. But you start yeah. looking, listening to a sad song, the world is sad. Right. So it's the same way when we look at that other mode of thought. So the breath theory and thought process over a period of time, it does melt a lot of, um, 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 how should I say, division like that. You start going through it. Because if you can, like I said, if you could detach from food, you could detach from a, a whole lot of thoughts, even gender, all this other stuff that we've been raised with, it'll start popping up and you start, it start breaking your bubble because you might have a um, prejudice about this group of people. They can't teach me this, this is it. And then all of a sudden spirit will show somebody from that uh, gender have the answer that you needed. So you start breaking more and more as you start coming into the unified frequency. Right. You know, man, this is really cool because it's actually really practical and sustainable and anybody can do it. And you're here showing like the way and um, Man, this just really has me thinking. Like, I, I, I really want to dip. I really want to dip into this. Um, and and I know perhaps right now it's not the time for, for me to do it, but you definitely are planting um, um seeds inside of me. Um, wow. So, uh, okay. So, um, we kind of talked about already, like, um, as far as uh, what are the steps to do if somebody wanted to actually start this life uh, uh, path and you listed the five the five steps and um we kind of got you know a little bit history about you and and how you came into the, this journey what what um well actually let me say this so on one of your videos you talked about that we are actually immortal and that um you know that's something that i believed my entire life i was homeschooled up until the age of up until the age of 12 and when i went to public school there was this book called Tuck Everlasting. And it was about this guy and he drank from a magic spring. I think his name was Jeff. And um, he liked this girl named Wendy. He wanted her to drink from it. She didn't want to do it. She ended up passing away. But we had to write a report on it. And I, I told my teacher, she was like, what would you, do? The, the, the question was, what would you do if, if um, you were a Wendy? And I was like, well, we don't have to die. I believe that everybody can live forever. She ended up giving me an F and she called my mom. So like a big, a, a big thing in, in my life was like, I always knew that we could live forever. I'm here in California now. I'm originally from New York and we have these gigantic trees. If you go up North, 
and they lived to be 2,000, 4,000 years old, you know, older than, um, than the Christ. So what do, what do you think about immortality and, and about people, the human body are uh, living forever as long as you want it to um, uh, live? Well, let's, let's make, bring it down to earth, which we are. Now we're in the age too that we've got the most centurions that's on the planet than ever before. That's people living over a hundred, like it's easy. Right. All over the place from every nation, every culture. And right now, due to our knowledge, we know a, a lot of this is based on, now this is where I want to get at too. A lot of your centurions, when you look at their interviews, they might carry a habit with them that will shake the foundations of uh, the medical field. Like one guy is 109 years old, but he start, he likes smoking his cigars. Right. Drink his whiskey every once in a while. So that throws people off at times. Right. And that goes back to your thought process of your perception of how you're looking at life. Because as I looked at a lot of them, one thing they got in common is how they treat people. So that means a lot right there, how they treat people. And nobody's overweight, you understand? Like one guy, he said, well, this is what I eat. And he got this whole thing of soups. Some person eat every once in a while. So that goes back to diet again. Now, of course, that person who are, is 109 years old smoking cigars, he's not going to go tell a group, peop- a group of young people, well, this is how you live to be long. Y'all smoke cigars every day. You understand? Right. The health can even be more profound. But the body does, the brain does, does need some type of stimulation. <clears throat> but for the most part, even in the medical community, they got a thing called uh, biological immortality. And what that is, if a person, just like a tree, the reason why the trees are that long is due to the, their environment that they're in, you understand? That means everything. Sort of like a fish in a fish tank. You understand? If the fish tank is clean, the fish are gonna be happy. Right. So this goes back to humanity and this thing dealing with global warming is behavior on our environment. Your environment polluting the air, ding, polluting the water, ding, you know, polluting the soil. And these things we got to live in means a lot on how long we're going to live. You understand? Now, then we start putting in this lifestyle. Like we said, now we're at least leaving alone the animals. Now, of course, we can't have a meaningful conversation with an animal, you know, about you giving them an interview like this. But we can record animals have feelings when they're sad, when they're doing this. And some scientists just said that they showed a a, a rat laughing. Now we laugh at that, but yeah, he's laughing. You're tickling him. He's making a certain type of noise. He's giggling. So that means they got emotions that by you putting somebody in trauma like that, we know how it is when you hurt somebody else, another human being. That can affect you, you're getting this trauma. So you're eating that trauma. So a lot of people is getting that memo. It will really do you a lot of good as you're coming on this journey. Because one thing about the journey that you will run into on a breath during journey, I'm going to make it plain. This goes way beyond food. You're going to go so much in this, uh, to energetic healing. Your body picked up everything you went through in life, whether if you forgot about it or not. All of that stuff is going to start coming up on you the more you start purging yourself out and you're gonna to have to deal with it. If you purposely hurt somebody before, you know, in a malicious way, for instance, you're not gonna get healing. There could be a lot of sickness dealing with that. You know, you did somebody to really mess them over. That will come up on you to, to give you a chance to deal with it. You understand? And that had to be addressed for you to start getting healing. That's why the breath and journey is a health message. That's why forgiveness goes along with it. All of this stuff. So you'll see yourself. That's why what people can't understand. How can you go without eating? It's way beyond that. I did deep mental and emotional work on myself to get to these levels and stages. And, and nobody gets away. It'll automatically come up in you. You thought you forgot about it and all this other stuff. Oh, man. So going back with this. Now, how, was, how did we start this again? We talked about um, immortality. So dealing with immortality... Once you start coming on to this journey, breatharianism is one of the byproducts of it. So of course, if I'm sitting here saying I'm in the best health of my life, I'm showing a form of immortality. 
I'm, I'm back again in the body that I had back when I was in my 20s or early teens. That's a sign of immortality. I didn't have to have to. I got friends my age walking around like old men now. You understand? Right. Seeing a doctor on medication. But that again, they could have also got this type of body. Now there's other things we put into play. You know, you, you maintain in this frequency. You maintain in this lifestyle. Now we talked about the sexual energy. Now, at one level, you do sexual, sexual energy does hold a lot of energy in the hip area. And when you start allowing those fluids that your body always make and start allowing it to reabsorb itself back in the blood instead of wasting it, that starts becoming another type of nourishment for the organs and also the brain. Now, one of them, if people can't understand this, is fructose. Fructose do goes in sperm. Now, we, we learned that your body, when you eat something, you get glucose, which is a sugar for the body. Fructose is also sugar for the body and it starts nourishing the brain. That's why you can go without food. You can become food free just through sexual cultivation. Uh-oh, did I say that? Yes, I did. But that takes another type of dedication. A lot of people say, no, nah, I'm gonna stick with my sex. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. hey, which ain't gonna... nothing. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. You oh, go ahead. Wh oh, which is nothing wrong with it. Because I got some people who want to go celibacy and stuff and use that as a thing, and they're in marriages. And I say, that's the stupidest thing ever. You might as well go ahead and get a divorce. Why are you doing your spouse like that? So right there, you're causing more trauma, and they're missing a point. You understand? I just happen to be in the right situation where I've been married before already. I enjoyed it. It was a good marriage, and she passed away. So it ain't like it was a bad marriage in a certain way. So if I already had that and got that desire off my chest, I don't have that desire to go try to repeat it. See, once you're satisfied with something, you could go into another experience. Sort of like the foods. If you enjoy a certain food, have a good time with it. You understand? But that don't mean you got to keep doing it all your life over and over again until it starts hurting you. Once right. you had a good time with it, you can lay it down and go into something else. Mm. Oh, this is what we're talking about. We're making this user friendly. Do so you... on this journey, age do mean something. At least when you're healthy, you're probably not I mean, younger. You're not probably going to want to do a life without food and sex right now because you want you got a family. You're doing diff different things with your career. But as you age, you start taking it to another level where you can lay it all down after you had those. But right now, this still fits you being younger because health is number one. Something should pop on your mind that if you're enjoying yourself being young now, you still can enjoy yourself 50, 60, 70 if you maintain a healthy life instead of going to the old house and have to go see the doctor. You understand? So it starts now. Okay. Don't wait till it's too late. That's why there's a thing called preventable diseases that deals with preventable medicine. High blood pressure don't have to exist if you're living a lifestyle now. I would never catch high blood pressure, the lifestyle I'm living now. It don't even exist. You understand? That means you're not on that frequency. You're not on that dimension. But the average person who's catering to certain foods and stuff, yes, it looks like you are on that level, especially if you're not exercising and all this other stuff. Right. So do you think it is possible just based on, and I, I know your answer, but I have to ask these questions, but do you think it's possible for the human body, the human being to live indefinitely as long as they uh, choose to? Oh, absolutely. Because at least 95% of the physical body, every organ, even down to the bone, actually regenerates, the cells regenerates to where you will have a whole new physical structure. This constantly keep taking place. Everybody has it. Every time you take a shower or a bath, the old cells go off and the new cells come back. I used to even have a mark on my skin, for instance, when I first started the journey. And it didn't even take long. Before the year was out, that mark that was on the skin came off. So I got a whole new skin. So if you regenerate like that, constantly become a brand new, this could go as long as you want. It's up to you on how long you want to keep regenerating yourself. Or you can die. People die because they kill themselves. Right. People get sick. Like like the preventable diseases. They got it because they created it. Now, whether we want to write it off as ignorance, yes. But then when you got the knowledge and you're not doing it, you still catch that. That's due to you want to. There's another experience you want to, to take place. 
And some people do get an experience out of sickness. You know, the attention it gives them, you understand, and all this other stuff. So everybody got their reasonings. Because what it boils down to, you are a creator. So so the body, so, so the, the, the body is already healing itself, it's already doing its thing. We just need to get out the way. We just need to put it in a good environment. We just need to stop stuffing it with junk and sugars and salts and all of these other things and you know uh, things that are uh, affecting our minds, such as music that maybe doesn't have our best intention in mind. And once we do all of that, and then basically the body's automatically going to heal itself the way if you cut yourself, your skin's automatically going to he uh, heal up. Is that pretty much what you're saying? Exactly. Now, the average person, even the intellectual, will say, well, your soul is an immortal. And everybody cannot agree with that, even though they don't know where the soul is. Right. But yeah, your physical body is immortal. We, we're saying that right now. It just needs the right care. And this is what we're learning right now. This is what the Breatharian journey is teaching people. Yes, we could go on continually in a healthy way. Oh, man, this is good. It is good. I appreciate you. What does what does 2020 mean for you? This, as you know, the number one word is unprecedented. This has been an unprecedented time. So many changes in so many ways. Uh, what, what does this year mean to you? If you had to sum it up in a phrase or one word. Oh, man. Well, this is going down in history as a great change without a shadow of a doubt. But however, when this quarantine started, immediately my message was take advantage of the quarantine. So I've been meeting people, working with people have, that this quarantine has been the best time in their life because it stopped their busy schedules and they had a time to know themselves, work on themselves. So there is a fraction of people who took advantage of it. Now there is a fraction of people too that has been a worse time in their life. And mainly that's because of the materialism. There is people who's dealing with a high, house crisis, you know, the bills is not stopping, their mortgages are not stopping. And a lot of people were living over their means anyway before this started. So for them, that's a great change taking place too. But even on that level, if you are losing a lot of stuff materialistically, if you got the right mind, you understand, that should free you up to say, I got a chance to start over. Materialism is easy. You can get that anytime. It's easy to get a table. That ain't nothing to cry about. Right. The main thing is focus on yourself. So on this year that we're going through, for me, it's been a great year. And for the, and for the people that I'm working with, it's been a great year. Of course, that fear-based frequency is out here, but that's why we're here to offset it. You understand? Because that's one thing about negativity on the planet. Nature or creation just don't, it don't even sound right for it to have just an overwhelming negativity to run life. That's not how it works. Positivity right. is always on top. That's what you have to recognize. That other thing is just a little small bushfire. So 2020 has been an awesome year for myself, for others. And even this year made me in my spiritual journey, even though I've been on it a long time, I've taken my body, my teachings, everything to a whole nother level. I'm loving it. I love it. I love it. You, you know, uh, a lot of people are talking about December 21st, 2020. I don't know if you heard anything about that. And it reminds me of December 21st, 2012. And they're saying, you know, ascension, 5D, the earth is going into a new vibration. You know, I've been speaking to a lot of people. A lot of people are uh, changing their, their, their uh, eating habits or even um, um, like myself, I noticed that I don't even eat as much as I used to. I eat one time a day and I might eat some fruit or something like that, but I'm, I'm good, which is why it's not too hard for me to fast. What do, you, what do you think about this whole ascension of the earth, you know, as far as 5G? Do you feel anything shifting with the energies? And, and I really wanted to ask you this question because as I was saying earlier, when you eat the denser foods, you're more held down by earth, but when you're in the cosmic, you're more attuned to the cosmic. So you're kind of like a cosmic antenna that I could speak to you. What do you uh, um, um, say about that? Oh, without a doubt. See, what's happening is the average person think they're making choices. And on a level that they are, they are for the most part. Hey, hey. All right. They are for the most part making choices. That's the level that they're on. However, 
nature shows us it's, it's under predetermination. And it's sort of how like we were just kept talking about our physical bodies, how they're already immortal and how it regenerates. That right. means that that's a law that's taking place that's already predetermined. It don't care what your choice is. And the average person don't realize how much they are being influenced by the energies that's inside us and the external forces. You are being influenced by that. So you're under predetermination. So there is, like you say, how we're in an age where not only this message is spreading, but the knowledge of meditation, the knowledge of the benefits of the sun, the knowledge of the benefits of fasting. That's not really the choice of people. That's nature putting it in us to do that and make these changes. So the vibration, we are all being influenced. You are coming willingly or unwillingly anyway. That's why even when I teach this message, there is no debate. I don't have to argue with people. Everybody feels it because it's time. Right. That's not even talking medical. So we're being influenced by the, the forces of light. Everybody is because we're light beings. You can't help it. You understand? So, but of course, when people start talking about it on those levels, at this time period, this is going to happen. Of course, everybody want their YouTube channels to be a lot better like they end up know. They talk to Archangel Gabriel and stuff. So, you know, we play the game. There have been many people in the class that said this was the end of the world. We know where that went. This is where this is going to happen. At 2012, this is going to happen. And okay. <laughs> so again, everybody act like they want to be the person that got it down, pinpointed to this date. All right. Now we are moving along as one entity, not only individual, be individually, but as one entity, but it's coming along anyway. And everybody have different time periods of when they're coming into it. <laughs> mm, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I like that. Wow, man. Um, all right, let me, I don't want to let you go, but you know, we've been talking for a while now and um, hopefully you can come back. Maybe we can do this once a week. I don't know what your schedule is looking like, but I know it's not just me. I know the people, they definitely want to, um hear what you have to say <laughs> and um hopefully we can plant some more seeds um let's see so we talked about uh freeing up time we talked about weight we talked about the benefits of it we talked about um you know 5g and new frequencies we talked about sun gazing yeah i wanted to ask you this question so you've been doing it for 20 20 years have you actually um eaten anything like what is what was the last time you actually consumed um uh food or, or water Oh, I'm glad you had to ask that question. Okay, when I say the message, I said I've been on this path for 20 years. Okay, now, so that means this is a skill and that's why I teach it, you can eat very little or not at all. Now, the last time I consumed was two years. It's been over two years. But you, what happens is- Do you oh, remember what that was? Oh yeah, <laughs> me and my son, he was traveling with me in Europe. So we're doing our thing with the message. Right. And then he was about to go back to the States. And of course, we're doing our traveling, doing our thing. So I don't know the next time I'll see him. Right. So we said, let's go have a good meal together. All right. So we don't know what to eat, basically, you know, because I eat in a while, even right. before it end. So I said, uh, I went to the store to see what I could get. And I seen all these different potato chips. So I'm grabbing this one. I never tasted this one, this one. <laughs> grabbing this and that. And That's I mean, we threw down. Now you'd be surprised how much a breatharian can eat. They can actually eat you up under the table. Somebody will say, would that mess up your system? No, it won't. <laughs> but, you're, but there is a saying, your eyes get bigger than your stomach. Mm. Now, later on that evening, my stomach was like a snake. <laughs> how a snake just ate something, there was a big bulge there. And I felt <laughs> awful. Oh, man. These refluxes kept coming up and potato chips. Yeah. I was like, oh, Lord, I couldn't lay down. <laughs> <laughs> my, feet, my feet were swollen, everything. Mm -hmm. Now, to, to make a long story short, by the morning, I felt better. So, of course, I was going to the bathroom all night, really getting relieved. Oh, it was coming out really good. <laughs> and the next day, I felt better, you know. It took about three days for your body to get back. So, that's talking about immortality again automatically it went right back. You know, feeling healthy that everything was online, but that was what we went through. Now, 
This is really key because again, people want big articles. So when I first came here to India, I told them I've been on the Breatharian path, you know, 20 years of stuff like this. But in order to get that big article, this man hasn't eaten in 20 years because he got to catch the people first. All right, here we go. And then I got to bring people down to earth. And when I explain to people, okay, that does get good attention, but it don't bring people down to earth. I want the average person to know they can do it too. Right. Now, of course, you could go without 20 years without eating. But when you're in this society, I was raising a family. I chose to eat one time every other weekend. You understand? Which is still unbelievable. Think about that. Eating every other weekend. Average person can't do that. Right. So that's the skill you pick it up. And there's reasons why you're doing it. You're trying to be with your friends at times. Say if there's a Super Bowl party, you ain't got to deny yourself. You understand that you can go back into it and probably don't eat for another month. So this isn't fasting and this isn't a food disorder. You actually picked up a live skill where you can make your choices on when you can pick something up and when you can lay it down. Now, when I made that last choice, that was because I was getting deeper in and really teaching this message across the planet. You understand you want that energy to be a lot more solid. And then I want to see how far I can go in my own experience. You understand? Yeah. So that's what it's all about. It ain't for other people. It's about where you at, how you want to apply it. So that's why we got to bring it down to earth so the average person, they can know they can do it because there was a lot of people who came into it. Oh, I ate something and they start beating up on themselves like they done lost the world. And I was like, it's okay. You ain't got to do that. You ate it because you wanted to do it. There had to be a reason behind it. You understand? Just get back on course. It ain't the end of the world. Your body's still who you are you'll grow into it as you come more and more. That really made a lot of people feel better. We're not trying to talk like Superman, you know, and all of this. No, you're taking your time, but being on the journey, it is what it is. Still, you can do things that a lot of people can't even do when you're on this journey. And this is what we want to make real to earth down the plane so people can feel more better at it. You ain't got to have an extra heart, extra lung, and this also break the mode of the old spirituality. Sometimes we'll think about a person spiritual that the angel only came to them. God only spoke to them. This isn't. This is a, a true technique of reality. And some people even think, especially young people, I get calls all the time, they want to be a breatharian. But they think this is something that's going to make them escape the world because they already got issues and problems. This isn't going to make you escape the world. Like I said, I'm detached. I'm living a whole nother lifestyle. But there were just people walking past right now waving. I'm still communicating. I still got relationships. I still got to talk. I still got to apply. So it makes you better in communication. Because most people don't even wait to uh, communicate is around food. Yeah, that's true. This is awesome. All right. I have Dinner three. with your problems. All right, go ahead. I have three final questions uh, for you. Um, so first question is, uh, somebody right now is 2020, like what we talked about earlier, just struggling, it's a bad year for them. What messages will you give that uh, person? Oh, well, we understand, like I said, that most of the struggle is, in my opinion, is the housing deficit and the bills people have and they're losing stuff. So of course, people are afraid to lose things. And I, that's understandable, big time. But like I said, when you asked me when we started out this, what got me on the journey? Oh. The journey was I was losing things and the thing I was losing was my health. Okay. That meant more than ever. Oh man, and it was shaking the external life. Yes, I was chasing a lot of finances, but that's what got me hurt. And I did lose things like physical houses, cars and stuff like that in the beginning because I had to redirect my life to see where the real value was. It was myself. So the advice I want to give to people as they're going through this different things, if some things you don't have control over, it's going to run its course. And it ain't as bad as it looks. Just let it run its course, hang in there, but start going more, looking at yourself, where you're at, and how you're going to start redirecting your life when you do come out of this. This is what I can say to most people. Because we will get through this without a shadow of a doubt. Humanity is tough. Yeah, we are. We, uh, we wouldn't even be here if our ancestors were not survivors. They've been through much stuff. This is child's play, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. 
Um, um, okay, biggest, biggest uh, regret. Do you have any regrets? Say again? Do you have any regrets? Oh, not at all. Not at all. This journey right here is all hope, joy, and happiness. That's what it's all about, regrets. That's not even in the pocket. What, what, is, what, is, um, what are the things that make you happy? Being healthy. Healthiness is happiness. Because like I said again, I know a lot of people from different modes of life, from the very poor, you know, like that, to the very rich. Right. Just, just in my lifestyle. And what I see is if a person's not healthy when they're poor, and if they're not healthy when they're very rich, you're not happy. So that should tell people right there. When they do say that saying, uh, your health is your wealth, health is happiness, we take those as those are just wonderful sayings. It is actually real. Mm. It is real without a shadow of a doubt. You're grabbing the best piece of the pie. I'd rather be broke and healthy. <laughs> me too, me too. Ari said that um, a broke person could enjoy $20 more than a sick rich person could enjoy $2 million. You know? Absolutely. So down the line yeah and, and this is what people need to realize right there so this is the best thing about the journey and there's no regrets whatsoever i'm so glad i came this direction and i'm still working on myself so keep in mind food freedom is a minor city power that means it's a minor power that's the gateway to other things that we got going on with our consciousness and in our mind so you know about sydney because th those are things that naturally it's like a flower of a um, of a plant, it naturally comes as the highest expression. And, and Sydney gave right. powers to like levitate and things of that nature, correct? So you're familiar with oh, that? Oh, absolutely. Right. All right so, so let's actually save that for the next uh, um, episode. We won't get it in, it in it too deep, but I know to a lot of people, they look at X-Men and Marvel comic books and things like that, and this might really seem far-fetched. But to me, in my mind, that has always been a reality and that people could always uh, attain those type of things. Oh, absolutely. And that's where we're headed. Our bodies are just molecules put together. That's how we have to start looking at it. <laughs> right, right, right. Holograms, holograms. That's just what we are. Thought processes. Hmm. This is what it boils down to. Where, oh, would, you, where, where would you like to see this earth um, uh, five years from now? What is your vision for the planet? Oh, well, it's just like I said, um, back in 2015, I said that the breath theory message by within five years, which is 2020, is going to be all around the world. And right now it is. I mean, it's still got to hit a lot of places, but for the most part, we got a good start. Now, and I told people by 2030, we're going to be living in a whole totally different world than what we're living in right now. Yeah. So even though we got the um, 5G and stuff like that on the scene, the technology is a whole lot faster. We're going places both physically and internally that you won't even recognize this. So in the next five years, dealing with the breath there and message, everybody on the planet is going to know it without a shadow of a doubt. I'll be one to help spread that message and uh, I'll start being a practitioner as well. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing <laughs> because I know my girl's going to look at this and I just can imagine the expression on her face. Um, <laughs> if, if people wanted to get in contact with you, with you, if they wanted to find out more about it, how could they um, reach you? Uh, the best way, my, my website, letom.org, and, and also my YouTube channel, and my email. But my email and contact information will, will be on the website, letomelamine.org. Got you. And I'll put a link uh, down below. Um, Hey, I really appreciate you coming on, man. It's been a pleasure. Um, thank you so much for everything. And I'm looking forward to the next uh, time that we could chat again. All right. This is wonderful. Thanks again. Keep up the good work and had the best life ever. Peace and blessings. Thank you. Oh, my God, you made it to the end. Thank you so much. If you're looking for more interviews like this with fascinating people from around the planet, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification button so that you get notified when more interviews come up. We do them about once a week, sometimes twice a week. Um, and if you have, haven't done so already, also hit that like button so that it can enter the YouTube algorithm and it can reach more people. I really do appreciate you guys tuning in. I really appreciate your support. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and do a little dance. Go ahead and smile. Pass it on. Because a smile is the most contagious thing. 
Hopefully you guys have a great day, a great week, a great month, a great year, and a great life. My name is Jonathan, and this is Seven Circles. Until next time.